All right, thank you. So um, my name is Amanda Tomlinson. I'm a student here at UC San Diego working with George Porter, and I'll present something old, something new, extending the life of CPUs in the data center. So every major data center has some kind of carbon neutrality goal. And to achieve these goals, data center operators are becoming major purchasers of renewable energy. However, this purchase of renewable energy only addresses operational carbon emissions. And data centers also generate these manufacturing carbon emissions when they buy uh, servers and other hardware. So as data centers increasingly purchase renewable energy, more and more of their total carbon footprint comes from these manufacturing emissions. So data center operators replace hardware, and specifically, I'll be talking about processors for a lot of different reasons, like better features, uh, increased core counts, increased security. Uh, but it's usually not because the uh, processor is actually broken. So it's usually after it spends some time in operation in the data center, it gets refurbished and re resold to another company. But this time spent in operation in the data center is the amount of time that that initial manufacturing emission gets amortized over. So in order to lower these manufacturing emissions, hardware should be kept in operation uh, for as long as possible. So in this research, we wanted to understand how we can increase processor lifespan and keep it in the data center for as long as possible because that's going to lower that amortized manufacturing emission. And specifically, we wanted to answer that question with respect to application performance and energy efficiency uh, by answering these following questions, which is, how have CPU improvements affected application performance? Uh, does the choice of application matter? How is CPU energy efficiency improving? And with recent advancements in liquid cooling, we also recognize that overclocking might be a viable strategy to increase application performance. So we wanted to understand uh, how we could increase application performance with overclocking. So to answer these questions, we looked at results from a publicly available processor benchmark for Intel server class processors over a 10 year period ending in 2021. So this benchmark has 20 different workloads that it tests, and then it assigns a cumulative multi-core and single core score uh, for each processor based on their performance in these workloads. And so for example, a score of two is twice as good as a score of one. So on the left is the multi-core performance uh, for all the processors in our data set. And we can see that over this time period, multi-core performance got a lot better, like about five to 10 X. Um, and then on the right is the single core performance. And this is getting better too, but about two to three X. So not as much over the same time period. And year to year, there's a lot of overlap. So if we take a closer look at multi-core performance, uh, again on the left for all the processors in our data set, we can see that this increase in performance is driven by the increase in number of cores. So in the middle is the cores per processor. And in 2011, this was a maximum of 10. Uh, and in 2021, we're up to 40. So if we look on the right, this is the total multi-core performance divided by the number of cores. And this metric is kind of relatively constant over this time period. So the first question we wanted to answer was how have CPU improvements affected application performance? And we can see that multi-core applications benefit from the higher number of cores per processor on these newer processors. Uh, single core applications run roughly twice as fast on a newer processor. And so this opens up an opportunity to possibly run single core applications on these older processors. Um, although a newer processor could run more instances of a single core application, each individual application does not see that much of a performance benefit. So 
So in addition to looking at these data set level metrics, we can also make an individual comparison. So here's the best processor from 2011 and the best from 2021. We can see that over this time period, uh, the cores went from 10 to 36, and we got a 7x improvement in multi-core performance and a 2x improvement in single core performance. But if we break this down by the actual workload, some of them performed better and some performed worse. So for example, uh, this is multi-core performance and our M-body physics workload saw a 2.7x improvement in performance over this time period, uh, but the machine learning workload saw an 11 time uh, improvement in performance. So even though the cumulative improvement was 7x, some of these workloads are a lot better and some are a lot worse. We can also look at these two workloads, this n-body physics and machine learning workload, uh, over time to see how they change year on year. And so on the left is multi-core performance. And we can see that this machine learning workload is kind of every year it gets better and better. But the M-body physics workload is basically just staying the same each year. Uh, on the right is single core performance. And besides this big jump from 2011 to 2012, both of these workloads have relatively constant performance over this time period. So the next question we wanted to answer was, does application choice matter? And we can see that, yes, the performance varies strongly by workload. Some of these multi-core workloads are only three times better on newer processors, uh, and some are over an order of magnitude. And so this gives us an opportunity to find these workloads that are particularly suitable to run on these older processors uh, and schedule them appropriately. So if we can find workloads that basically perform the same, we can extend these, this processor lifespan without sacrificing too much application performance. So next we looked at processor energy efficiency. And so on the left is thermal design power. And this is a specification value, which is just the maximum power that a processor can use. And on the right is the multi-core performance uh, for each processor divided by its thermal design power. This gives us a performance per watt. And we can see that from 2011 to 2016, this has risen about two to three times. Um, and since then, it's, it's rising slower. So we wanted to know how CPU energy efficiency is improving. We can see that processors from 2021 are about two to three times more energy efficient than processors from 2011. And so this presents a trade-off between these operational emissions and manufacturing emissions. So the older processors are going to have higher operational emissions, but lower manufacturing emissions. And so one opportunity here is to schedule the use of these older processors with the availability of green energy. So for example, in California, we have a lot of solar energy, which is available in the middle of the day. So if we can shift work during the middle of the day to these older processors, then we can balance their higher operational emissions while still extending their lifespan. We also wanted to use our data set to see if there was any potential to overclock these older processors and improve their performance. So this is not usually really done in data centers, but with excess green energy and advancements in like liquid cooling, this could be a viable strategy to get more performance. So what we did is we looked through our data set to find pairs of match processors. And these are processors that have all of their specifications are the same, except for their clock speed. And then we looked at the multi-core performance uh, to see what the potential speed up would be. And we found that in this rightmost column that we have about 25 to over 
uh, performance improvement. So finally, we wanted to know how overclocking could improve application performance. And we saw that 25 to over 100% improvement is possible. And this again gives us another opportunity to schedule uh, overclocking with excess green energy so we could continue to use older processors that have maybe poorer performance and increase their performance, uh, which would increase their lifespan. So in conclusion, we wanted to understand how we can increase processor lifespan based on these trends in application performance and energy efficiency. And we wanted to do this because extending processor lifespan lowers manufacturing emissions because these manufacturing emissions get amortized over the lifetime of the device. So what we found is that over a 10-year period from 2011 to 2021, um, Multi-core performance got five to 10 times better. Single core performance got two to three times better. Energy efficiency got two to three times better. Uh, but the magnitude of these increases were dependent on uh, the workload. With some workloads being three times better in multi-core performance and sometimes being uh, over an order of magnitude. And so in the future, uh, we'll continue to look for suitable workloads to run on these older processors and schedule them with the availability of green energy to lower overall emissions in the data center. Thank you. Okay, okay. questions. If the next person, I forget, uh, maybe they're online. Uh, if the next person could get set up for it. Yes. Um, um, yeah, uh, thanks for the great talk. Uh, just a quick clarification question. Uh, are these uh, older CPUs also using uh, older DRAM and other system components, or what's held constant across? Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, yeah, this processor benchmark, uh, they would be using like uh, older DRAM as well. Yeah, and it depends too, like, this is people running their own benchmark, so it could be. For the same processor, it could be using different types of DRAM even. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Chen, U Chicago. Great talk. I mean, I really appreciate your work in this area. So I'm kind of curious. It seems like there's one dimension here that hasn't been teased out, which is a lot of the new processor, server processors in particular, are now using tiled architectures where they put multiple silicon dies together. Like AMD has made a lot of progress by doing this. It's entirely possible that the carbon and body carbon of the processors is increasing much faster because of that more silicon being used and so on, that might make this even more compelling. So maybe that's one area to look. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the actual, like, num the actual amount of carbon that's being put into these processors is kind of a difficult number to find. So that would be really interesting to know, yeah. Yeah, uh, one other sort of very quick uh, question that I had was whether you had a, uh, between the 2011 2021 whether the chip area how the chip area was what was changing over that period of time do you do you have any data on that I don't okay yeah. that, that, that would help I answer that question um I uh, uh, last second from that up um so hyperscalers might run their course like at fully utilization or they, they try to right but but many others don't and so i wonder if you looked at sort of idle energy cost or when the machines are not fully loaded i mean that this is sort of the top end right if you manage to max the system out what would it do but but most people don't do that i wonder if you have any data on that yeah uh i don't but that's also really interesting because that would change this operational trade-off yeah yeah great okay um Thanks very much. Uh, if you can turn off your mic, that would be helpful. Okay, so we're going to switch uh, uh, computers here for a second, just technical.